So to really understand the implication for image deblurring problem, okay, now let us let us revisit. Okay, let us revisit what we started off okay, to really solve, which was a deblurring problem, right? Along the way, we saw so many notions of uniqueness, existence, ill conditionedness, and all that, which were not really specific to image processing. But 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 then right those are very 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 general ideas but uh, which are which are, which are useful across uh, across these research areas. But now let's come back to what does this all mean for the image deblurring problem? Okay, image deblurring is a specific kind of problem right, that we would like like to gain more insights into. Now, right, we would like to know what is this notion of ill condition is how does it affect our our deblurring issue the invertibility part the the you know the numerical stability part and therefore. Right, how let's say one could probably you know uh, probably bring in prior knowledge in order to be able to offset some of these some of these uh, some of these fundamental weaknesses or fundamental issues that let's say right uh, deep learning deep learning right inherently has. Now, in order to understand that, right, let's first let's first study what is an inverse filter. Right, like I said, you need you would need a restoration filter that will actually that will actually get you back. So we said that we have G, which is a blurred image. We said we'll have a restoration filter R. Okay, which will then give you an F hat. Okay, now the, the simplest filter, right, that you can think of is really an inverse filter. What is an inverse filter? How does it work? Now, now let's kind of go back to let's go back to our let's go back to our notion of uh, uh, our model, the observation model. So, which we know is G is equal to H F plus N, right? This is our this we know is our observation model. Now, assume for for instance that uh, this is space invariant blur. Okay, this is our D, uh, this is the blurring model we know. Okay, this is the blur, and then this is the clean image, unknown. Okay, and uh, this is the observation. Okay, now assume assume that that H is known. Assume H is known. That means somebody somebody tells you the impulse response or the point spread function, the blurring function. It's space invariant, and it is also also assumed to be known. Okay, now. <laughs> Now this in the convolution form we know is uh, H convolved with F plus N, right? And then when you write it in a vector, a matrix vector form, this becomes H F plus N, where this H is a matrix, right? Which will have entries of the impulse response inside it. N is your noise. Okay, now this becomes a vector now. Now, okay, right? I'm not I'm not specifically underlining vectors, but yes, you know, in order to see uh, differentiate between this convolution model and this matrix vector model, right, it makes sense to say this. Now, because of the fact that right, that this is all uh, uh, because of the fact that right, uh, this uh, this is space invariant blur. So, for the Fourier domain, or if you go to the Fourier domain, the frequency domain, what do we have? We can write effectively. We can write from the spatial model. Right, we can write that GKL. Let's say some frequency is equal to HKL, the the you know the the Fourier transform of the impulse response. FKL, the Fourier transform of the of the image and then let's say NKL. Okay. Now suppose suppose noise is very small. Suppose noise is very small. Very small. That means in my I say observation the noise is very, very small. Tiny teeny uh, teeny noise, right? So so G is equal to H F plus N. Now one uh, right so so you would be tempted to do the following. If noise is very small, then maybe that what I would like to do is I might simply say because of the fact that H is invertible, since H is invertible, since H is invertible, okay, and uh, I might just say let me approximate F hat as H inverse G, right? I can just do this because my noise in the observation is very small. Let me just ignore it. I mean, it is there, I know, but then I just ignore it when I compute my solution. I simply say H inverse G. But then H inverse G is nothing but H inverse, but G is my observation model that cannot change, right? That has noise in it, and therefore this is how it will become. This will become F plus H inverse N. Or in other words, in my in my Fourier domain, in the Fourier domain, in the Fourier domain, I can write equivalently that F K F hat of K L is equal to F K L plus NKL upon HKL, okay, where where this is the Fourier transform of, of the of the impulse response. Now, if you notice, right, 
okay this car this is called as the inverse filtering because all that all that you have done is you have you multiplied g with the inverse of h because h inverse is what you would like to you would like to uh, no h inverse is what you need to undo the effect of blur that's why it's called a pure inverse filter now you have this nkl by hkl now that means your your solution right the estimated uh, estimate that you're getting of f is away from f by by this number now if this was his nkl right we would have been happy because we knew for a fact that noise is very small therefore if the solution had been fkl plus nkl we would have been happy unfortunately it's not that it's nkl by hkl the fact that even if noise is small but the noise exists right because that is where g is equal to h plus n had to be brought in because noise is not zero so therefore some noise is there and therefore some small amount of noise is there but then when you are kind of when you are kind of deriving the solution what is going on is that you got like nkl divided by hk and for us hkl is not is not something arbitrary hkl is really a blurring function what does that mean that means that uh, okay let me draw the right hand side so that means that hkl okay is going to look like that okay this is kl let's say right i uh, know and then this is my hkl Okay, and and as we know that the magnitude of HKL at zero comma zero should be one. Okay, you can think of this as the magnitude of HKL if you really wish. You want to put put this as magnitude, because we know that we know that the impulse response sums up to one. Therefore, H at zero zero should be one. And then as your K comma L increases, the the so right, it should start to fall. Falls because of the fact that HKL. HKL is is a kind of a low pass filter, right? Any averaging operation, blurring, is an averaging operation. It's a low pass filter, since blurring is an averaging operation, right? Blurring is an averaging operation. When you say that you're blurring an image, you're doing some kind of an averaging, weighted averaging, perhaps, whatever it is, right? So it'll have to be a low pass filter. Your edges become blurred and all that. It's a low pass filter. Now. <laughs> doing 1 by hkl right amounts to saying that uh, that right i mean so doing 1 by hkl amounts to saying that you have something like that okay so this is so you're going up like that and that is that is 1 by hkl okay this is hkl then your 1 by hkl would look like that now what uh, now the issue with this is that when you're doing 1 by hkl and then uh, right so if you see 1 by hkl keeps in, keeps increasing as scale decreases Therefore, for small amounts of noise, it won't matter because HKL you now will be close to one. But then, as noise increases, K comma L increases, then for higher K comma L, HKL is actually falling, or one by HKL is actually increasing. Therefore, right, there is an amplification of noise, noise amplification going on here at higher frequencies, which then means that if you simply blindly try to do one by HKL for all frequencies, right, think that it is blurring like this. Therefore. You do one by HKL over all frequencies, you will end up producing an F hat of KL, which is very noisy. Okay, which is will be which will be unacceptable to you. Therefore, in the inverse order, what is normally done is you try to right you play a small little trick. What you do is you fix up some value epsilon. Okay, think of this epsilon as some kind of a slider, which is a number between zero and one, and then you limit the amplification factor because you know that you know making the Uh, taking the whole HKL as it is, right, creates problems because at one by at, at large KL, one by HKL becomes really big, and that amplifies your noise, you know, in a high manner. Okay, this is what we mean by the ill conditionedness, right? We have assumed that H is invertible. That is the reason why we could divide by H. Okay, okay, we 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 assume space invariant. In fact, if you see here, we said H is known and actually invertible. In fact, okay, that also we have assumed. That means that we have assumed. A very ideal condition in a real situation, we may not even be able to invert it. But we have we have assumed something that is that can be as easy, right? I mean, that can be as easy as as, as we can make it. But despite all of this, there is still trouble brewing because of the fact that that you are doing NKL by HKL and one by HKL is blowing up. <coughs> Therefore, what is done is you limit. Okay, so the zero is less than epsilon, less than or equal to one, right? You you keep a slider, and then what you do is you know so you kind of you see so instead of using HKL as it is, you modify it to something called HMKL, where HMKL will be equal to uh, HKL provided uh, provided magnitude of HKL uh, is greater than or okay greater than epsilon and uh, maybe epsilon otherwise. So what this means means is that. As so 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 as long as your magnitude is fairly high, that means right till this point, right, you're okay. Okay, you continue to continue to no no continue to de-blur, and then the moment 
it falls below value epsilon you 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 kind of restrict this hkl to to kind of epsilon which means that which means that you kind of limit your see inversion to 1 by epsilon okay so this is like 1 by epsilon so it means that you are only kind of so what this means is that you go to de blur only in this region up to this frequency after which right even though the actual blurring might have happened right it's going way down but then uh, then you're not de blurring all that you're only de blurring up to this frequency therefore right therefore what you can say is choosing so if you choose if you choose if you choose epsilon close to 1 close to 1 then the output image the the filtered image will be will will have will have less noise because of the fact that you've hardly deblurred it less noise but will be but will be too smooth but will look very smooth very smooth doubt or or blurred okay so unacceptable right you don't you don't like okay just because it doesn't have noise it doesn't mean that it is okay now if you choose instead if you choose epsilon close to 0 then the output image will be sharp okay because of the fact that you've been you're deblurring right because then then you're going like all the way you know so you're going like suppose you choose epsilon here then it means that you're going to deblur all the way right up to this correct let's say right here is your okay Uh, so, so if you're going down, okay. So if that is your epsilon, then right, then you are actually deblurring a lot more, and therefore, then the output image will look sharp, will appear sharp but very noisy, but will be very noisy. Again, right, unacceptable, unacceptable. Therefore, therefore, right, therefore, what this means is that. I need to find out what may be the optimal, what may be the optimal epsilon, right? For which, for this image, my de blur output looks okay. Now, this also means that this also means that if you have heavy blur, right, then your ability to you know de blur will actually go down because because heavy blur will actually mean that mean that right, this curve will will become even more narrow. That means that means your your magnification will in fact start much earlier than, for example, when you have a see less blur and so on. therefore your 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 control so how much you can deblur so it's like a trade off between how much you can deblur versus how much of noise you can accept right so 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 this kind of a trade off right so trade off between between noise and the uh, and sharpness right and the output sort of sharpness the uh, quality or deblurring quality right between noise and the you know the you know, deblurring quality uh right here here we are we are we're doing it in a loose sense in the sense that epsilon is sort of trade off it's being controlled by epsilon okay it's controlled by epsilon okay right that's what is happening controlled by epsilon okay which is which is ad hoc okay which is which is kind of ad hoc okay kind of ad hoc there is a systematic way to actually do this We we might be able to do do a do a much superior job as compared to a simple inverse filter. I mean, such a theory that allows you to bring in prior knowledge in order to be able to regularize your solution, in order to be able to be able to get a judiciously guide guide the algorithm to the correct solution and not to a noisy one is called is called regularization regularization theory, right? Which is what we will see next. <clears throat>